This is the Crochet Dreamcatcher tutorial by Watch Me Knit. For this project, you'll need to follow a crochet motif. I found this one off of Pinterest and will be using it for the video. I will link the pin in the description down below, but feel free to use whatever pin you would like. Okay, so for this project, you will need an embroidery hoop or something that you can make a sturdy circle frame out of. Um, this is from Joann's. It's the brand top notch. However, you can just use whatever you can get your hands on. I also have, of course, my yarn and appropriately sized crochet hook. This is 6.5 millimeters and it's the Hook Nook brand crochet hook, which I really like and have a review of. A darning needle or just anything you can use to tuck away some ends and then a pair of scissors. So once you have your motif that you're going to follow, you want to put your hoop aside. This is going to come very last. And for me, my motif might look a little bit different than yours, but essentially I'm just going to work this as a normal crochet piece. And so mine starts by creating a slip knot, placing it on my hook, and chaining 10. I'm then going to slip into the first stitch, create a slip stitch, and now I need to place 20 double crochets in this loop, and the first chain three is going to count as one of those. So I will chain three and then create 19 more double crochets. And it's important to note, or I guess not super important, but I like to just tuck in the starting tail while I go, so I'll crochet over it as well. Okay, I have completed all my stitches, and now I'm going to insert my hook into the third chain to slip stitch and complete the row. So something really important to note, because I just ran into this myself, is sometimes whenever you pick a random pattern off of Etsy that you've never, or off of Pinterest that you've never done, and you have a certain size hoop, after each row, I would just come in and check to see where you're at in the process because you want this to be taut within the hoop so you don't want the actual crochet to go all the way out to the edge and I'll explain that more as we get into it. So my next row I'm going to chain three and then put a double crochet in the next one. I'm going to chain two and then I'm going to not skip any and place another two double crochets in the next two. So essentially we're double crocheting two, chaining two, double crocheting two, chaining two, all while not skipping any spaces. Okay, so don't forget that last chain two. I'm going to slip into the third chain of my chain three to complete the row. Okay. Okay, big pro tip here. So the next part of my 
pattern actually starts in the gap. So I'm going to be doing a crochet cluster of two, chaining two, and another crochet cluster of two. And so you can either, if you're using a single color, you're gonna need to think about how you do this. If you're changing colors, your job's a little bit easier here because you can cut and then just pick up right here. However, I'm using one color. So what I can do here is slip into the next stitch, slip into the gap, and then get started that way, or I can cut and reattach. I'm just gonna slip because I don't think it looks too, too bad. Okay, so I'm going to chain three, place another crochet into the gap, chain another two, and then place two more double crochets into the gap. And so ba that's basically the cluster sequence for each gap you've created. Okay, so I finished the last pull, and I'm just going to, again, slip into the third chain of my chain three, slip stitch, and that has completed this row. So now the next step, and as you can see, I have pulled one that I've previously made of the same motif with a little bit different color, um, is to place six double crochets in the gaps we've just created and one single crochet in between the clusters. So same thing here, and actually on the motif, it tells you you want to start with a single crochet, so I'm actually set up in a perfect spot to just place one single crochet here. Again, think about where you need to be if you're not changing colors, and just be mindful of that as you move forward. And another thing we're going to do is check where we're at within, and I actually think this is going to turn out perfectly because as I said, you want it to stretch whenever you're putting it all together. So let's finish our last row. We are going to place six double crochets in this gap. And this is gonna create a shell effect. So whenever you do a big cluster of double crochets followed by a single crochet on each side, it creates that nice like fan effect. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm going to place a single crochet between the two clusters. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this. Um, something I'll note is you really wanna make sure you're counting good here because since this is gonna be a wall hanging, every piece is going to be extremely visible and is going to be a focal point within the project. And I don't know if I'm just super AC, ACD, OCD, however, if I noticed that there was maybe one double crochet missing, it would really bother me and it wouldn't look professional. So I'm going to go ahead and just finish this using a time lapse and then I'll meet you back here and show you how to put it all together. Okay, 
So I'm at the end and I'm just going to slip a stitch into that first single crochet that we made. Here we are going to go ahead and cut a tail. Then you're going to secure your piece however you do. I like to do one chain, pull it tight, and then chain another one through so it creates like a double knot effect. Okay, so before you put it in your actual hoop, just go ahead and clean up whatever you would like to clean up. So I saw here that my beginning string got pushed towards the front, so I'm going to pull that to the back and trim it. Trim that. And then I'm going to go ahead <clears throat> and weave my tail into my work, just however you find easiest. So I usually like to get it under a few stitches just so it's secure. And then just cut that. Okay, now we're ready to see if it works in the hoop. So I said I thought this might be perfect, but actually looking at it now, it looks like it might need one more row and I'll show you how I figure that out. So basically it's just a guess and check. So what I like to do is pull points that are going to be connected. And here you can see the design is almost warped too much. So I don't think it's gonna work. But that is perfectly okay. There is an amazing hack to getting any motif to fit a larger area. Not a smaller, unfortunately, but a larger. So I'll show you that now. We are going to, in nine times out of 10, you'll have to cut your cut a tail and secure and tuck on and do all that good stuff before you do this. So I'm going to place a slip stitch on my hook and then I'm gonna look and see what makes sense. Okay, what are the main points? And for me, it's the middle of these clusters of three. So I'm going to start in between these and place one, single crochet. I'm then going to count how many stitches are in between this single crochet and where I'm going to place my next one. So for me, that's seven because I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I am going to chain seven stitches. going to place a single crochet into the next thing. So basically the idea here is we're giving it some extra ability to stretch just by simply adding chains. So I'm going to chain seven more. Place it in between the next cluster. And that's why it's so important to to just make sure you have the correct amount of double crochets in the previous row. Five, six, seven, because especially since you're splitting these apart, you'll notice that you know one size might have three, one might have two, so you just really wanna make sure it looks clean. So now I'm at the end and I'm going to slip into that first single crochet. I'm going to cut a tail.
grab my hoop, stretch. And so now it's a matter of preference. I think that this could be okay. And I actually am probably going to move forward with it. However, if you think it's going to be too stretched, then by all means, add another row. And the trick for that, on the next row, you'll add one chain in between each. So you'll chain eight. So you'll single crochet, chain eight, single crochet, chain eight, single crochet. But I'm going to go ahead and attach this. So what we want to do is take off whatever labels we have on our hoop and undo the hoop from the outside. Set the outside aside. Same thing goes if you're using just a wreath circle. You just don't have the outside. So you'll, you'll just complete these steps the same way. I'm going to place a slip knot on my hook. And this is tricky and I'm not sure how it's going to translate on camera, but what we're going to do is essentially crochet our next row and attach this. So what we're going to do in the middle of one of these holes, we are going to place a single crochet around the crochet and the hoop. And it is, let me tell you, it is kind of goofy to get used to it. But once you do, it will start to make sense. Then we are going to chain seven. So one thing I'll say about this, there's a lot of ways you can attach this. You can tie knots, you don't have to crochet at all, but this is just the way that I find more efficient and preferable. And I chained seven because that was the last number of crochets or stitches in between here. So for me, that's just how I do it. You can feel free to add eight or add one so that it's eight. And obviously, like as I go, this isn't what it's going to look like. You know, this is goofy looking. But as we go, it's going to stretch. And you might just have to mess around with it, play with where things lie, and that'll all come in time. And a good way to tell if this is what you're going to like. So now that you have some attached, go ahead and pull it to the other side. I can tell that this is going to sit good enough for me. So I'm going to keep going. If not, unravel everything and add another row. Another tip I'll say is, so I'm using a really bulky crochet hook, um, and that's because I'm used to this. I've done this multiple times, um, but if you're having trouble crocheting with the hoop because it's a sturdy structure and whatnot, um, shoot for like maybe a slimmer hook, like or maybe the one of the Susan Boy aluminum ones that are completely pinned straight. Just because that'll give you a little bit more wiggle room. It'll just be, you know, a good transition into doing this. It's going to get tight, I'm telling you. So, again, just do a little self-check. I'm going to slide my single crochets down. See, I'm liking how that looks. It is super stretched out. It's super tight, but it gives it good integrity as a wall hanging. You can see I'm wrestling with it, basically. It's a lot of fancy footwork towards the end here. You gotta do a lot of things all at once.
So this part might be a little bit tricky, but to end it, you're gonna slip into that last, or that first single crochet, and then cut yourself a tail. So this actually is a little bit tight. I probably should have did one more row, but I actually think it looks kind of cool. So it's all just up to per personal preference. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead, tuck my ends in, and then we're gonna finish this off. Okay, so to finish this off, and this is totally up to you, I'm gonna push all my single crochets and chains to the back. I just think it gives it a little bit of a cleaner look. I think that it makes the design pop out more. Um, and it's just what I prefer. You definitely do not have to do this part. Um, but so that's how it is looking now. And I didn't tuck these ends in. Whoops. Okay. We are now going to take our outer loop. If you don't have one, skip this and move on to the next step. But if you do, we're going to expand our hoop until it can fit around everything. Pick where you want the top to be whenever you're placing this as well. So I actually don't want that to be the top. I'm gonna make that the bottom. Lay it flush against the table. And then go ahead and tighten. Okay. Tighten it as much as you can. You can grab some pliers and make it even tighter. However, since nothing's actually attached to this, um, it's not vital that it's like completely as tight as it can be. So last step is we are going to cut a few pieces of our yarn probably about yay long, I would say about 12 inches or more. I would cut three, again, personal preference. And whatever the first one is you cut, just make sure you cut the others identical. Okay, so now, I'm going to loop these, tie a knot. This is for the hanging, if I didn't make that clear. Tie a knot. And then go ahead and tighten that bad boy. I then like to trim these so they look nice and even. Okay, we're then going to Slip the loop through here, the knot through here, or actually maybe you might have to, my other hoops were a little bit bigger. Slip the knot through here if you can, and then secure it. And then tighten your hoop up again. Okay, once you've done that, make sure everything looks good. Tighten it again if you need to. Tuck in the remaining loose ends and then you are good to go. If you're using a metallic hoop, something that looks really nice is twine. Um, a couple of my metallic hoops, I've done those. This, whenever I use a wooden hoop, I kind of prefer to do whatever yarn I used for the center. And that's pretty much it. If you complete this project, please post it to Instagram and tag me watch me knit or hashtag watch me knit. I'd be really excited to see what you can do. And I think that's it. I'm gonna tuck in my ends and then get a few pictures of this hanging on the wall. Thanks everyone, please like and subscribe and comment future videos you wanna see.